Disney's Disneyland. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Each week as you enter this timeless land, one of these many worlds will open to you. Frontierland. Tall tales and true from the legendary past. Tomorrowland, promise of things to come. Adventureland, the wonder world of nature's own realm. Fantasyland, the happiest kingdom of them all. Presenting this week from Fantasyland, the Disneyland fourth anniversary show. And now your host, Walt Disney. <laughs> Not very good, is it? <laughs> you know, seeing this old piano reminded me of the time when it played an important part in one of the studio's most exciting adventures. One of our great modern composers, the late Sergei Prokofiev, played his musical fantasy for me on this very piano. That was a long time ago, back in 1938. As I remember, Fantasia was in production, and we were working on Pinocchio, too. The days were filled with meetings and story conferences, and we were all working under pressure to meet our picture deadline. One day, my friend Rudy Polk, vice president of an important talent agency, called me. Jimmy Hello. comes into the scene. Yes, yes, he's here. Just the... Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Rudy Polk. Rudy! Listen, I know you're busy with Pinocchio, but I have a man here, a composer, I think you should meet. Well, Rudy, we're still fighting the story, and we haven't got around to the music yet. Well, the composer is Sergei Prokofiev. And he had you in mind when he wrote this new composition. Sergei Prokofiev. That's right. And he says you're the only man to do his Peter and the Wolf for films. Well, that's wonderful, Rudy. When can you bring him out to the studio? How's today? Fine. I'll be seeing you. Good. Remember, this was back in 1938, and we were in our old studio, and we were terribly crowded for space. So when Mr. Prokofiev arrived and wanted to play for me, I had to scratch around to find a piano. Here's a room. I'm afraid it isn't much for piano, though. Don't worry, Walt. It'll do. To make matters worse, Mr. Prokofiev spoke very little English. And, of course, I spoke no Russian. a musical theme. The one he just played was that of Peter the Boy. Now he's going to play the theme of the bird. And now Sonia the Duck. father's theme.
our story really begins when Peter disobeys his grandfather and uh, goes out to hunt the wolf. And that's how it was. And as he played, he told us the simple, charming story of Peter, the little peasant boy, and his hunt for the ferocious wolf. I remember how his fingers flew over the keys of our battered old piano. How his face glistened with perspiration as he concentrated on the music. And all the time I could see pictures. I could see his lovely fantasy coming to life on the screen. had other plans for us. The war turned our studio into a military reservation. All our facilities were devoted to making films for the war effort. Insignia for submarines, planes, ships, and tanks. Training films for the Army, Navy, and the Air Force. Put aside our wartime activities. Training films were forgotten. And we went back to the job we knew and liked best, entertainment. Naturally, Peter and the Wolf was one of our first projects. That's the story of our old piano and of the great composer who played it one day a long time ago. Now, this is a story of uh, 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 Peter and the Wolf. Well, then you're not dead. You're safe. Oh, Sonia, this is the most wonderful, wonderful day. The wolf is captured. Peter caught him. You've just seen our cartoon version of Sergei Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf. However, Prokofiev isn't the only great composer whose music lends itself to the cartoon medium. There are others, such as Rimsky-Korsakov. Hi. Hi, Cubby. That's Cubby O'Brien of the Mouseketeers. Later, Cubby, okay? Now, when we began our production of the musical feature, Fantasia, one piece Tchaikovsky had written particularly appealed to us. We felt Excuse me. Cubby, I don't think you understand. I'm talking to our Disneyland audience. Fine. It's okay, kids. He's just sitting on the desk talking. Come on. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> now listen. What is this? I was just sitting here talking to the audience when, oh, these are some more of the Mouseketeers. Annette, Bobby, Darlene, Karen, and Cubby. Now, boys and girls, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. You see, I was just telling the people about the famous composer, uh, uh, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, right. Now, I've already done the first half of the program, so I've got to get along and do the other half. Wait a minute, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Now look, you've got your show, right? Right. I've got my show, right? Right. All right, now you go over there and sit down. Please, 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 please,
Oh, she did. Congratulations. Oh. Well, thanks, but how come? This isn't my anniversary. Well, not technically, but it's the third anniversary of Disneyland. Yeah, Disneyland is three years old. Going on four. So we thought we'd throw a party. Right, gang? Right! Now, if you'll just sit right over here, Mr. Now, wait Disneyland. a minute, wait a minute. I've got a show to do. Well, so do we. We've got a show to do for you. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate it. But look, I've got the Disneyland show to finish. And if I don't get back to my office, there won't be any show... We understand to... perfectly, Mr. Disney. This will take just a few moments of your time. Ready with the curtain spin? Any time. In three short years on Disneyland, we've seen almost every kind of show. You brought us everything from Donald up to Peter Pan. Safaris in the tropics and adventures in the snow. The whole world opened up before our eyes. Each Disney show revealed a new surprise. In Fantasyland, we met a chap. He didn't have much beneath his cap, but he had personality. I do the super goofy shuffle to keep myself in trim. Nothing's hard, my friend, if you know how. <laughs> you also do the super goofy shuffle whenever you go win. And I think I got the win right now. <laughs> Thank you, Mouseketeers. Now, what are we really going to see on Disneyland this year? Yeah, what's the inside story? Well, let's see. 
We're going to have some more Donald Duck and Goofy epics. Oh, I'm going. And of course, we're going to explore outer space again. We're going to Mars and beyond this time. Oh, that's for me. And there's still a lot of fascinating places left on this old Earth of ours, so we're going to visit some of them. Check. And then there's a very special fellow I hope you're going to meet. Who's that? His name is Andy Burnett. Andy Burnett? Well, a very fine writer by the name of Stuart Edward White wrote a series of classical adventure stories about Andy Burnett. When did it all begin? Hold it there, Walt. Let me tell him. You know, Andy Burnett happens to be a particular favorite of mine. Okay, Fess, it'd be a lot better coming from you. Thank you, Walt. Well, kids, uh, the story started a long time ago. Andy Burnett was a frontier boy from Kentucky who inherited Daniel Boone's rifle. As he grew up, he moved west across the country. In a way, the story of Andy growing up is the story of America growing, too. The times are gone that he once knew. Endless woods and the sky so blue. The trails no man had trod before. The wilderness at the cabin door. The urge to know where the rivers flow. The freedom to up and pack and go. Lucky for us a few men yet. Remember the saga of Andy Burnett. Andy's on the move. Andy won't rest. Andy Burnett, he's a traveling west. He won some friends and made his place With mighty men of a mighty race They took him in to teach him more Of mountain life and mountain lore The laws of trails and trapping streams The danger is not what danger seems Lessons to learn and not forget All part of the saga of Andy Burnett Andy won't rest, Andy Burnett, he's a traveling west. Andy Burnett, he's a traveling west. Jerry, come on in here. Hi, Fess. Hi, Jerry. Folks, I'd like you to meet Jerome Cortland, who from here on is going to be better known as Andy Burnett. Hi. Congratulations, Jerry. I want to say that I hope that that Daniel Boone rifle does for you what the coonskin hat did for Davy Crockett. Thanks, Fess. Thanks a lot. Uh, tell me, are there any ladies in the cast? Well, Fess, with the mountain men, the most important gals are the ladies in the sky. Ladies in the sky? Sure. That's what you'll hear me and the mountain men singing when we're riding down the trail. Boys? <laughs> Ladies proud and high, blow the wind from the mountain, ladies in the sky, no lover ever had a sweeter dream than I. Lost my heart to the mountains, there I want to roam. Going back to the mountains, where I feel at home. I will be faithful until I die. I will always be faithful. Then what happens after the saga of Andy Burnett? Oh, uh, there'll be the story of Johnny Appleseed, and then you'll meet some interesting cartoon characters, uh, Little Toot and Susie the Little Blue Coot. <laughs> <laughs> what about Sorrel? And you're going on a very unusual sea voyage called the Wake of the Kukui. Gee, that's... What about Zorro? Zorro? 
As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think I should talk about him. You see, confidentially, Zorro won't be on the Disneyland show. Mm. Well, Zorro is an entirely separate series, on the air at a different time. Time? Time? Oh, excuse me, I've got to go. Oh, 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 just a little about Zorro, then you've got to let me get back to my own show. It's a deal. Well, a long time ago, there was a masked rider who rode the countryside. This was an old Spanish California, back in the days of high adventure and low, soft guitar. <laughs> I promised you about Zorro. Boy, oh boy, was Zorro a real person? I'm afraid not, Moochie. You see, Zorro's a mythical character. He's something of our imagination. Uh -huh. What's that? That's your imagination. Senores. Y senoritas. Zorro. At your service. As you say, perhaps I am only a part of the imagination. I remember that's what they said about me in California. Some would smile and say, Zorro, poof, he's a ghost, a dream, a myth, or something of the imagination. Look out! Watch out, Zorro! 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 It is entirely a matter of opinion. This is a personal thing between you and me. Whether I am real or not is for you to decide, each of you in your own mind and heart. Meantime, till we meet again. Present? Well, I have time for that. Here, Mr. Disney. Thank you. What is this? Well, it's sort of a book about Oz. Oh? Well, it isn't exactly a book. It's more of a shooting script. Shooting script? I guess we'd better explain the whole thing to you. Yes, I think I'd like that. Are you comfortable? I'm comfortable. Well, it's like this, Mr. Disney. The studio owns all the Oz stories, right? Right. And we've got to think of our future. We can't be Mouseketeers forever. Yeah, we're not getting any younger. We thought if we could do the Oz picture for you that oh, maybe you'd let us... Please, 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 now, I'm going to make a picture out of the Oz stories, but I always figured to make it as a cartoon. When? Takes you seven or eight years to make a cartoon feature, doesn't it? Well, you got me. What's your proposition? Well, first of all, we'll take most of the weight off your shoulders. We'll handle the songs for the pictures, the dance, the sketches, right? Right! What about money? Well, we figure in an artistic production such as this, money is of secondary importance, right? Right. I don't know what I'm saying, but go ahead. On the off chance we could get you to listen, we've prepared a couple of samples. Nothing very elaborate, you understand, just rather informal. Now, here you see are some of the characters in our story. First, the scarecrow. Remember the problem he had getting a set of brains? Well, in our story, he has trouble keeping them. Here's a happy little character. Dorothy meets her in Oz. She's called the Patchwork Girl. Nice sketch. What happens with her? Well, in this little scene, the Patchwork Girl meets the Scarecrow for the first time. Bobby is the Scarecrow, and Doreen is the Patchwork Girl. <laughs>
pretty patches. Put the pretty patches in a patchwork quilt. Sew and stuff with cotton. Add some yarn for hair. One thing they've forgotten, a heart I do declare. But who needs a heart? Not me, I swear. Patches, patches, when you're made of patches, life's a gay and giddy holiday. With laughter and song, I'll go dancing along a happy little patchwork way. Organdy silk and crepe to sheen, tweeds and plaids and crinoline, Turkish towel and taffeta too, purple and pink and baby blue, velvet and satin and linen and lace, shoe button eyes and a muzzle and face, a calico head with cotton brains, they'll shrink, I think if it ever rains, Jiminy, criminy, criminy, Jiminy, what if it rains? Corduroy poplin and percale, looks like a walk in rum and sail. Brags and tags and ribbons are bright and gay. With laughter and song, she'll go dancing along her happy little patchwork way. Now here, Mr. Disney, is a sketch of Ozma, the beautiful lost princess of Oz. Annette is going to play the part. I think she'll be wonderful. And here's the lovable old cowardly lion. Trouble is, he isn't so lovable anymore. When he becomes the King of Oz, an awful spell is put on him. This makes him cruel and conceited. Now, when Dorothy, the girl from Kansas, arrives in Oz, she and her friends try to break the spell by giving the lion a song and dance that Dorothy calls Oz Can Hop. A dance part, Kansas part, Oz. Take the beat, beat, beat of the Kansas rain. When it tap it out the rhythm on your window pane. Then from Oz you get a tune that just won't stop. Mix them up, and then you got the Oz Can Hop. Take the walk of the lion, he's the king of Oz. Add the wiggle of the woozy as he claps his paws. Take a pinch of Kansas side boom, sprinkle on top. Mix them up, and then you got the Oz Can Hop. Did you ever dance a Kansas Square dance? Out the do an Oz quadrille. The combination makes the rare dance. Oh, it's Kansas and it's Oz, the best that ever was. Makes you feel so happy.
Okay, Mouseketeers, you've earned it. We'll take a flyer on Oz. You mean you're gonna let us do the movie? Widescreen, color, everything? Everything, the works. Oh, oh. Okay, you're sure? I'm sure. Okay, another cake now. Up we go, the rainbow covers sky. Well, party, Bucci, you only forgot one thing. What's that? Mickey Mouse isn't here. Huh? Here I am, Walt. Well, hi, Mickey. I didn't see you come in. Oh, I've been here all the time. Great bunch of kids, aren't they? Sure are. Hey, Suffering cats, I've got just time enough to do the trailer for next week's show. Hold the fort, will you, kids? Next week, our program from Fantasyland goes back into American folklore to tell you the stories of four fabulous characters. Here now are some scenes from next week's show. Next week, Walt Disney turns to American folklore to tell you the stories of four fabulous characters. With Dennis Day singing and narrating, you'll hear the heartwarming story of Johnny Appleseed. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord. For giving me the things I need, the sun and rain and an apple seed. Yes, he's been good to me. You'll meet Johnny's guardian angel, too. And what an angel. You'll see Johnny braving the wilderness, alone and unafraid, planting his seeds, befriending the animals, and transforming the land with his flowering apple orchards. Then Jerry Colonna takes you to explore the romantic days of railroading, the dime novel days of train robbers, black-hearted villains, frantic heroines, and brave engineers. Jerry tells you the exciting story of the bravest of these brave engineers, Casey Jones. The 
king's men take you to the foothills of Kentucky for the saga of the most famous feud of all time. When the baby got his head, it was bound to end in shooting. And you'll see how, at long last, this famous feud was ended by Dan Cupid. Or was it? From the galaxy of our fabulous characters in the field of sport, Jari Colonna tells you about the most spectacular failure baseball has ever known. Casey at the bat. Now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood watching it in haughty grandeur there. Fear is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. So be with us next week when Walt Disney brings you Dennis Day, Jerry Colonna, and the King's Men to tell you the stories of four fabulous characters. Oh, <laughs>